Hail backers and fans, and welcome to another Deadfire update. I'm Katrina Garston, producer for Pillars 2. In a previous update, we showed you a sneak peek at our big city, Nakataka. Today, lead designer Bobby Knoll will look a little closer at that city and some of its districts and walk you through some exciting new features you can expect in this exciting section of the Deadfire. Enjoy. Hey, everyone. As most of you know, Pillars of Eternity 2 is set in the region known as the Deadfire Archipelago. The capital of the Deadfire is the grand city, Nakataka. Today, we're going to be heading up the mountain to explore some of the districts within the city. Currently, the party finds itself in the port district, the Queen's Birth. While there's a ton of things to do in this district, I'd like to focus on a new feature for now, so let's head on over to the back alley for a little mischief. Here we see some performers entertaining a small crowd with a simple magic show. Aloth is feeling a little squirrely today, so he decides to show off some real magic. You'll notice, townsfolk now have more realistic behavior when attacked. Some will flee, while others will cower in fear. Luckily for the party, there are no guards in the vicinity, so Aloth concludes the demonstration by hamming it up for the terrified crowd. Now let's travel up the mountain and explore a little more. Here, you'll notice one of our new settlement maps. We're obviously looking at Nakataka at the moment, but there are other towns to find and explore throughout the Deadfire, like the pirate port of Dunnage. These maps let us add unique adventure scenarios when traveling between locations. You may run into a foolish noble and his guards that have gotten turned around in the rough part of town. Do you offer to help him? Maybe you want to rob him. You might also come across a traveling mystic who offers to read your fortune. Or just maybe, you'll be attacked by shadowy assassins because you crossed a powerful person or a faction in the region. Okay, we finally arrived at Pariki's Overlook. Let's visit a few locations. First up is the Dark Cupboard. This magic shop boasts the most exotic and powerful items in the city. While the shop is owned by the resident Archmage Archimir, it's managed by his apprentice and guarded by powerful ironclad constructs. While we're here, let's look at another new feature, shop theft. Stealing from shops can now remove an item from the store's inventory. This allows players to attempt to steal things of greater value than in the original game. Just don't get caught. Next up, we have Archimir Manor, home to one of the reclusive and mysterious Archmagi of Aora. This multi-leveled adventure area has several entrances, similar to Radric's Hold. I don't want to spoil too much about the location. Let's just say there are some interesting things to find inside. Moving on. Here we have the Luminous Bathhouse. This inn caters to the wealthy of the city and is rife with adventure opportunity. Last but not least, I want to give you a brief peek at the top of the mountain, the Serpent's Crown. This royal district boasts some fantastic views and is home to the Hoana elite of the city. Within the halls of the Kahanga Palace, the Queen's tenuous hold on the city is constantly challenged by foreign factions vying for influence in the region. And of course, the city has its hidden underbelly, the gullet. Within this underworld, Crime and poverty rule, and you'll never know if that shadow in the alley will offer a helping hand or a dagger in the back. Thanks, Bobby. We hope you enjoyed Nakataka, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. Way more cool and exciting features are waiting to be discovered by you. We'll be back in a couple weeks with another update from the feed of the director. And as always, be sure to follow us on our social media accounts below. Thank you guys for watching.